electric vehicle. And um, since George W. Bush took um, office, he's been he's been the big step towards hybrid electric vehicles. Uh, he's been putting the funds for production of hybrid electric vehicles. Um, um, so I'm sure many of you have thought about what get, um, what type of car would give you the most miles per gallon, and you probably heard about like the Toyota Prius. That's the one common one out there, and um, I think it does about 60 gallons a mile. Yeah, 60 miles per gallon. And you all have also thought about how much money it would save you or save your mo save money in your pocket. Um, what else? Oh yeah. So my parents have a Volvo six cylinder. It chugs the gasoline like a monster, and um, uh, it does like about 15, 19 miles per gallon, which is not a lot, especially like for me. Like if I would bring it to school, I don't think that would be like a good option for me. And um, so hybrid electric vehicles are a great option for anyone who wants an efficient car and um, and make a positive impact on our environment. So, okay. I'm gonna be first talking about pros and cons and how they work. And second, how they impact our environment and society. And I'll be showing you a video. Development is completely up in the air. The old days of engines in the front, transmission midway, and drive shaft out the back is completely up in the air. And few cars keep it there more than this one. A concept from Mitsubishi called the CT MEV. MEV stands for Mitsubishi in wheel electric vehicle. Here's what it means. Down here on this corner is an example of a wheel that has an electric motor behind it. And that's the same all the way around. The idea behind this car is to be powered locally at each wheel, as well as having a gas engine, but a very small, stingy gas engine. In this case, they envision a one-liter three-cylinder. So clearly, you've got the ability to add additional torque, as well as handle a very logical, efficient all-wheel drive through this system. Instead of having heavy transfer cases and shafts running all over, it's just controlled by a computer that varies the amount of torque at each local motor. Now, you've never been able to buy a car with this kind of technology, but that doesn't mean it's going to be in your grandchildren's era. Mitsubishi says as soon as the 2010 model year, this four-wheel local electric motor technology could show up in one of their existing models. Okay, so that was the video. Um, Okay, so uh, that's the, these are the components, and that's an example. Uh, it comes with an internal combustion engine and an electric motor. The good thing about having both is that um, if you have both, if one messes up, the other one is like a plan B. So you don't have to like ask, like call the tow truck, like, hey, come pick me up, um, which is a good thing. And so like it has a regular gas engine, and it has um, the electric motor. Some of them they come with four four motors on each wheel, like you saw in the video. And um, the good thing is that like it it saves more um, it gives more torque, which makes the wheels it gives them more power. And um, all right, so then it has the um, integrated power electronics and battery pack. So it has like the system computer that that sends like the electricity to the batteries which are in the back of the trunk. And um, it has two transmissions, which is also another advantage, which means you could use the uh, gas engine and the electric motor. And it has the final drive. I think the final drive is the one that makes this, the wheel spin on each on each wheel. So they have like this belt that makes them spin. And um, yeah, that's how it works. Okay, so these are oh yeah, pros. Two motors, it's fuel efficient. Two motors, engine and gas, engine gas, and electric motor. It's fuel efficient. It saves way more money than using. It saves more gas and money than using um, conventional cars. Uh, it does do less emissions, not as much as people think. It probably 
the SUVs they do about 21% less less pollution than using regular cars and so another good thing too is that the brakes when you brake like it causes friction and like the energy gets transferred through like through the chassis through like wires and then it goes to the back of the trunk into the into the battery which charges the electric motor so you don't have to be like plugging it in into like the station I don't know if you've seen down here in the engineering building they have a they have two charging stations so that means you have to spend money but like they're trying to make them not do that instead they're using this technology brakes and battery so brake makes friction creates energy and it stores it in the battery and the cons is that it's a little bit pricey they usually go around like twenty to thirty thousand dollars for like a small one like the SUVs probably go for like around fifty grand and it's not fully developed yet it's it's still a process but it's getting there and the thing is that it has an advanced system so which makes it a bad thing is it has like a lot of tricky things that like they work together so like if one thing messes up and you have to like replace everything and like you can't take it to like um, a mechanic like on the street because they're not going to know about this stuff you have to take it to the dealer and another disadvantage is that if you get the plug-in hybrid electric vehicles you have to um you have to go charge it and they um you have to spend more money kind of like wasting on gas money and yeah so they offer more traction too stability and weight distribution on chassis this one does, this is a Toyota Prius, this is about 60 miles per gallon on city, 51 on highway, and 55 for a combination of both. And so, this, um, the lead acid, they, they forbid them now, like they don't want to use those because it's, it's bad for the environment. And eco hydride, um, it's a bad thing because it's a human carcinogen, which means that it causes cancer. And the lithium ion, they're, they're not fully developed either, they're getting there. Phones and cameras have them. They're not as emission free and depends what city you live in because some of them use power, um, they use coal to make the energy but like the good thing is that like most cities now they just use um, they're trying to use hydropower which means they use the water to convert it into energy so then that energy you could use it like to store into your batteries and into your car. Um, so these are all like the, the how they're going to look like this one is supposed to come out 2014 that was from the iRobot movie and that's a Ferrari for racing. And alternatives, public transportation and bicycle and walking. That's what some people think like it's better than buying a hybrid because it's too much money and it's not as good now. Like maybe 10 years from now it'll be better. So I talk to you about talk to you about the use of the pros and cons and how they how they affect our environment and society. And so, if you ever think about buying one of these cars, it's a good option, better than using a regular one. And, I don't know, think about your children now. Because I'm sure you don't want them to grow up with all sick and stuff. Thank you.